Hello and welcome back to the 2024 Baking Challenge. It is week number 38 and because I love you all so much, we are baking with pumpkin reluctantly. So ugh, grab your ingredients and let's bake. Today we are going to mess up a perfectly good chocolate chip cookie recipe by adding pumpkin. I don't love pumpkin. I love fall. I love the chill in the air, the beautiful colors of the leaves, the rainy days, Halloween, just not pumpkin flavored food. <laughs> Admittedly, it's been a while, so um, maybe my tastes have changed. I'm going to try this because I know that so many of you are pumpkin lovers out there, and quite honestly, when I sat down a couple weeks ago to look at what I had scheduled coming up, I realized there wasn't one pumpkin recipe in the whole bunch. So I made some changes, and I've added not one, but two. You'll get to the next one in October. but. Today we are making pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Ooh, okay, <laughs> let's get to it. Um, we're gonna start with butter and sugar. Hang on just a minute, because I left my butter over here in the microwave where certain creatures wouldn't get into it. Oh, I guess first we need to turn on the oven, 375. Check your oven, make sure nothing is living in there. 375, oh, wait a minute, that's not it. <laughs> that was the timer. 375 and start. Okay, in your mixing bowl, you are going to add butter and sugar. How much butter? 16 tablespoons. Friends, that is two sticks of butter. That's okay. That is okay. It's fine. It's cookies. Cookies have butter. Softened butter. Definitely make sure your butter is soft. Not melted, but soft. All right, that is all my butter. We are adding that to a cup of, or not a cup, a half a cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. It can be either light or dark brown sugar. I have dark brown in here because that is what I had open. You are going to get that going. While your butter and sugar is creaming together, you're gonna to get your dry ingredients mixed up. For this, it is two and one fourth cups of all purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Did I add that? Hmm, yes, yes I did. A half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ginger. And you're gonna get that, you're just gonna whisk that together in a separate bowl. Now, with your butter and sugar, you're gonna have to stop and scrape the sides of the bowl. This mixer is doing such a great job. I'm very happy with it. I do need to scrape the sides of the bowl though. I don't think my butter is as soft as it should have been. You don't have to let your butter like sit out overnight. You can pop it in the microwave just, you know, 20 seconds at a time and then down to 10 seconds at a time when it starts to to look like it's melting until you get it soft. You don't want it melting because your cookies will be the wrong consistency, depending on how you like them. It's been my experience that when I add melted butter to chocolate chip cookies, like when I forget to soften the butter, so I stick it in the microwave and it melts completely and I just add it anyways because I am not patient, my cookies tend to be very flat. Not bad, just not quite the consistency that I may have been looking for. All right, that is pretty well done. Uh, well, maybe a little bit more, that's okay. Mm 
There we go. Okay. Do, 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 do. To this, we are going to add our eggs, vanilla, and pumpkin. That's two eggs, uh, along with a teaspoon of vanilla, which I already have in here. <sighs> a 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. You can make your own. You, you can make your own pumpkin puree. Um, I'm adding pumpkin. That's as far as I'm willing to go. I love you, but this is it. This is, oh, that's, that's as far as I'm willing to go for this. Um, honestly, I have made my own pumpkin puree in the past. I have taken pumpkin pies to family gatherings before, and I used to be big on doing everything from scratch so I would cook the pumpkins and make the pumpkin puree and it's time consuming it's not difficult but honestly canned pumpkin is fine we're not gourmet bakers over here at least I'm not I do have it all over the counter though that's great <laughs> that's great I am going to be smelling pumpkin for the rest of the day and possibly tomorrow. And look at that, some of it got in my dry mixture. Ugh. Oh, it's on my hands. Okay, we are going to slowly start. Nope. You may need to scrape the inside of your bowl to get your sugar mixture completely incorporated with your pumpkin. I, my pumpkin seems to just be kind of sitting on the top and not really incorporating terribly well. So scrape, mix, scrape, mix until it's all mixed up. Don't know what to do. Sorry. Okay, try it again. There we go. Yeah, just needed to scrape the sides. This does not look appetizing at all. Does not look appetizing at all. Oh, you, this is also where you're going to add your orange zest if you want. It's uh, the zest of one orange. It is optional. I opted not to buy a whole orange just for a cookie recipe. There we go. Okay. This is where I'm going to break out the big spoon. Ah, big spoon. We are going to add our dry ingredients just a little bit at a time. I'm gonna grab this bit of pumpkin here and throw that in. Whoop, I might be going a little too fast there. I'm gonna slow my mixer down. You can see that I am letting the dry ingredients completely incorporate before I add more. I'm just doing a, a heaping spoonful at a time. So this is the time consuming part right here. It's gonna take a while. The texture is definitely starting to get better and so is the smell. I smell a lot less pumpkin and a little more fall. That's from the cinnamon and the ginger, I suspect. You will notice that when you get down to the last bits of your dry ingredients, your cookie dough is definitely getting a lot thicker. It's gonna throw that flour a lot higher. You may need to reduce your speed just a little bit while you're adding your dry ingredients. And that's okay. It'll still get all incorporated in, but it won't throw your flour everywhere. Okay, now we're gonna add our chocolate chips, which is two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I have about half and half milk chocolate and semi-sweet because I like to mix the two. Notice I'm not using my mixer because it will pulverize the chocolate chips and then you'll have tiny little bits, things get weird. This is also where you would add your cup of chopped walnuts if you are going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We do not eat 
walnuts in this house. So just the chocolate chips. Gonna get those all mixed in. <laughs> okay, with the addition of the chocolate, this batter is smelling pretty good. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. All right, tablespoon scoop. It is definitely a wet dough. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be, so I'm worried it's gonna spread. I'm gonna make sure that I have lots of room here. I'm only gonna put eight on a tray. Remember, I'm working with half sheet pans because my ovens are on the small side. So I'm definitely, definitely keeping things small until I know how this cookie dough spreads, because I think it will. My oven is ready to go. These are going to go into the middle rack for about 18 minutes. This is a very long bake for cookies. I don't, I don't know other than meringues that I have ever baked a cookie for 18 minutes. So into the oven we go, middle rack. Kitchen timer on. And now we wait. It does say that when you take the cookies out of the oven, you're gonna let them cool on the baking sheet for five minutes and then transfer them to a cooling rack. So keep that in mind. And I'll see you back in like, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, edges need to be lightly browned before you pull them out. So <laughs> fingers crossed. Behold, pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. This recipe makes a lot of cookies. Now, this doesn't smell bad. Cautiously optimistic. At this point, the cookies are cool. If you wanted to, you could make a glaze. I'm gonna try them without a glaze. Maybe I'll make it if I feel like they need to be a little sweeter. The glaze recipe is a cup and a half of powdered sugar two and a half tablespoons of milk and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. You mix that all up until it's nice and smooth and you can either turn your cookies upside down and dip or you can take a spoon and drizzle over the top. If you do the drizzle method and you've not done that before, get a drying rack like this, cover a baking sheet in foil, put your rack on the baking sheet, your cleanup is gonna be so easy. And then you just put your cookies on the baking sheet and drizzle. Stick your drying rack in the dishwasher when you're done, throw the foil away, easy peasy. All right, it is the moment of truth and I'm a little nervous, um, but I'm, I'm committed to seeing this through. And um, I will tell you the texture of the cookie is a lot like a muffin top. It's very springy. It's, uh, it is definitely not a dry cookie. It's a very cakey cookie and it smells really good, so. Okay. I don't really taste pumpkin. I taste the cinnamon, I taste the ginger. I taste both kinds of chocolate in there. It tastes warm. Um, if that makes any sense, like the cookie itself is cool. Temperature wise, that's not what I'm talking about. The flavor combination, and maybe, maybe it is the pumpkin. It's just extra sweet because of the sugar and the chocolate. Um, this is a good cookie. <laughs> it's a really good cookie. I, I like something pumpkin flavored. I did not expect for that to happen. Well, that wraps up week number 38 with our pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. I am a fan and I hope that you had the chance to make this recipe and that you also enjoyed these cookies. If you haven't already, you should hit the subscribe button below because I put out one of these videos every single Saturday. You can also head over to the Facebook page and follow along there because on Wednesdays and sometimes on Thursdays because I'm a little into procrastinating, I will put out the name of the recipe that we'll be making along with the ingredient list.
That way you can decide if you want to bake along and you can get your shopping done in time. I think I'm going to go ahead and make up the icing glaze and try that on a few of these and see who around me would like to try some pumpkin cookies because there's a lot of cookies here. I will say as a quick warning, I did try to put more than one tray into the oven at a time and they did not bake correctly. Now I have a smaller oven. It only fits a half sheet. I put eight cookies per sheet on one tray at a time was definitely the way to go. And with an 18 minute long baking time, it's going to take you a while. But in my opinion, it's absolutely worth it for this little tasty pumpkin fall treat. I will see you next week. <music>